Thank you for joining us. I'm Mike Spence on the TSPN TV news desk, and I'm here with special guest Richard Forrester. Hey, Richard, Mike. pleasure I, having you on. I don't think we've ever sat side by side before. I don't think so. We, this is we've this talked is, we've talked a lot, but never side by side. This so. is a first, and yeah. uh, we have you on today uh, for a special reason. You're always on doing the supervisory uh, information, and you do a great job of that, by the way. Uh, you do the supervisory thing the way it should be done. I really have to commend you, you. for your efforts, and you're, you're very committed to that. Uh, but you're here today because you sit on the board uh, for RCRC, which is the Rural County Representatives of California. And that organization is out in Sacramento. And we also have in the studio their, their executive director, Justin. And this RCRC uh, organization is very important to rural counties throughout the state of California, and especially Amador County. And uh, they have selected 30 counties, I believe. I think we're about 32 counties now. That are a part of that organization. Mm -hmm. That's huge. And they usually have a supervisor who represents them in right. Sacramento. Supervisor uh, and an alternate from each county. Right. And you are that person. That's and you right. are involved in that organization. So you're the perfect person to have on to uh, describe to our viewers exactly what's going on with a number of different issues that RCRC is involved with. Uh, number one, the biggest one, is that fire fee. So why don't you go ahead and let's get into it and tell them as much as we can about what's going on with that, Richard. Well, as people know, um, they've just received their, their second bill. If you live in Amador County, I think four counties have been billed uh, to this point. Uh, the billing started to come out uh, late July, and um, I know I got my bill about um, about two weeks ago now. I got mine. And it's $115. I get the $35 off because I'm already in uh, an assessment area. So if you're already being assessed a, um, a fire fee that you have voted on, or that has been adopted in your area, then you get that $35 off. So first you want to make sure that's actually happening. Anybody that lives in the unincorporated area of Amateur County uh, gets a, um, a bill from Amateur Fire Protection District every year. Um, then you're going to get this state responsibility area fee. And, uh, you know, I like to dispense with fee because basically it's a tax. It's nothing more than a tax. It was mm -hmm. voted in by the state very quickly in 2011 in AB 29X. And it was hurried through the legislature. There wasn't a lot of public comment involved. And then the governor signed it. Um, you know, it was really an attack on rural counties. And uh, I've heard only one person I've talked to that said, you yeah, know, I get the bill. Uh, we need fire protection, just pay it. it. We need the fire protection. Well, granted, Cal Fire does a great job in what they do. A very expensive job, but a great job in what they do. Uh, they are a very costly organization because of their benefit structure and, um, and because their firefighters, like most firefighters, are 3.0 at 50. But um, all that set aside, they do a great job. I know a lot of people in Cal Fire. They're wonderful people. This is a tax that just should not be in place. It should be something that's implemented statewide. CAL FIRE is a statewide emergency response, fire response organization. Uh, their most expensive areas that they have to protect are actually not the rural areas, those state responsibility areas. The most expensive areas are when they have to go into urbanized areas. And because those areas, um, you know, San Diego County, for instance, has those state responsibility areas but many times where the, you have to go down and fight fires, and I've gone with crews from Pine Grove when I worked there with CDCR, when you go fight fires at times, you're not in SRA areas, you're in areas that are just urbanized areas where they need uh, mutual aid brought in. Cal Fire is gonna be the one responding. They're the biggest organization. They look at themselves as the, the best firefighting uh, organization in the world, and they tout that at the uh, Cal Fire Academy down in Ione. So, um, that, that being said, that may be true, and that probably is true, but when they go down to these urbanized areas, it costs a lot of money. And uh, the, urban, the urban counties are not having to pay that SRA fee. It's the rural counties that are being attacked and the rural areas of those large urbanized counties. You're highlighting uh, the difference between the urban taxes and a lot of state laws that are designed to be perfect for urban areas throughout mm -hmm. the state, but don't always apply very well to rural areas. And right. that's what RCRC really specializes in, in terms of trying to make sure those laws are equitable mm -hmm. and designed and implemented the correct way for rural areas, because right. there is that difference. And uh, that specialty in rural, uh, when I came to Amador County, Richard, I, I thought rural meant 
livestock, uh, cows yeah. and cattle and horses, mm -hmm. because I have horses. And I thought, I'm a rural mm -hmm. guy, but I didn't realize rural meant population and the density of population. Right. And we are in a rural area because our population is so spread out as compared to urban areas where the laws should be designed differently for. Right. And RCRC is really specializing in making sure that those those issues are, are fair for rural areas as well. Do you think they're second, uh, giving it second thought now? I know that there's, there have been uh, a lot of, there's been a lot of energy to figure out where that money is actually being spent mm -hmm. and committees trying to analyze uh, why it's not going back into our local areas and it's being spent in different areas. But do you think they're thinking now and there's momentum for that fire fee to be generalized to the other areas? I don't believe so at this time. Uh, that won't happen until um, hopefully the Jarvis Gann lawsuit, which is a class action lawsuit representing all counties now, if that is uh, upheld and it's been granted the authority to go forward now by the courts, if that is upheld, then the state will have to rethink, the legislature will have to rethink. The, the whole problem, Mike, is that what you have is a situation where we're dominated in our legislature by urban legislators, just based right. on population. I mean, you know that, that Amador County doesn't have the representation that L.A. does or Santa Clara County. Right. And those urban legislators, they don't have a clue sometimes as to what's going on. It's an easy vote for them to say, this is not going to affect my people, my constituents, and uh, there's not enough of them to, to care about, so let's vote for it. So they've stuck us with a big tax, an unequitable tax, uh, an unfair tax all the way across the board because uh, you can see that many times in our rural areas, we already have t multiple taxes in place. Um, sure. We have Measure M that our people voted for, for fire protection within our county. Uh, to try and hopefully one day create a consolidated fire structure. But right now we have Measure M that goes out to fund our different fire departments in our areas, whether it's Sutter Creek, Jackson, Jackson Valley Fire Protection District, Lockwood. But within those areas also, you have the, the local fire district taxes that have been passed. Uh, for instance, Jackson Valley Fire Protection District. They pass their own uh, fee to go on top of anything else to help their own uh, fire department even more. So there's two taxes. Yeah, we're being double billed and even triple billed. That's double. Now yeah. you have the SRA tax on top of that. Yeah. So there's triple taxation. Um, I think that the Jarvis Gann lawsuit will be successful. Uh, our legislators don't seem to hear or comprehend anything else other than a lawsuit. And the, the governor is right in there with them. Uh, they're, all they're trying to do is think budget. How do I fix the budget? Well, let's stick it to the rural counties. Uh, they can't do anything about it. They don't have the votes. Right. Uh, and so that's basically what it comes down to. But if it is successful, they'll have to rethink what's going on. The other thing that'll happen is there needs to be a reimbursement built in for people that were unfairly taxed through the SRA fees. And that's why um, RCRC is encouraging people that receive those SRA bills to go ahead and pay them, but pay them under protest and file the appeal. You need to file the paperwork. It's all on the Board of Equalization website, or if you have, have trouble there, just call the Board of Supervisors office. But uh, not don't to protest. Not, yeah, yes. Don't protest by not paying it. Pay that, it first. That, that's right, because then you get separate. yourself in trouble where, yeah. you know, you don't want to make yourself well, the, the example. The penalties. Certainly you can the always, if you appeal and file that protest, you always have the ability to at least get in line for repayment later, where if you don't appeal, there is no chance of that. It's hard to pay it. Yeah, I, I understand how people would think, I'm not going to pay this bill, because I'm one of those examples. I get double billed. I have a place at Kirkwood, and uh, you know, I get a bill up there. We pay for the fire department up there. We have right. a private fire service. As well we as pay. measure in. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm getting the bills from everywhere, everywhere else. And you, know, you start looking at those bills and thinking, eh, you know, it's unfair. I'm just not going to pay it. But right. we recommend to definitely pay that bill and then protest it afterwards. And there were successful protests last year. How many That's of those? Right. Uh, yeah, I think uh, last year in 2012, there were 30 appeals that were 300, I believe it's 300 appeals that were successful. And the reason they were successful is because um, well, the problem, let's get the problem first. The problem is you did not have the Board of Forestry or CAL FIRE working with your local county assessors to figure out who should be billed for these things. They went out to an in, independent outside agency to work with them on who gets billed. Well, who knows better than your local right. uh, county assessors uh, and who can answer those questions? They know the county the best. They didn't ask those questions, and because of that, you had 
people build across the state who, and the, you know, these are 300 appeals. There were probably many appeals oh, that weren't even more. filed. Certainly. But <clears throat> you had people across the state who were being built without habitable structures on their property, um, or maybe they didn't have a structure at all on their property, but they're receiving a bill. And it was all because uh, the configurations, the maps they were using, the GPS or whatever was, was just wrong, or they didn't know the area. You know, our county um, assessors indicated that a lot of houses were in foreclosure. Some of them become uninhabitable after a right. while. Some of us have people sleeping in our barns. That's right. <laughs> you know, so you have to deal with all those billing, cases. Well, and that's the know. other case, too. I had some people that they were being billed on their barn. Right, right. And But they said, well, I don't, I don't live in my barn, so... Well, there's a bathroom in there. That's right. <laughs> you know, so you have to... You, you have get to, another bill. That's right. So you have to appeal <laughs> yeah. that case. Yeah. But beyond that, you have the ability for um, Cal Fire to go out and actually tax uh, local and nonprofits that have structures there. Let's say you have a uh, satellite station for a jail. Um, they have the ability, if it's considered habitable, to go in and, and tax that structure or a nonprofit status, same type of thing. It's unbelievable. We're going to go to break right now. We're going to come back with Richard Forrester, our county supervisor, and also a board member on RCRC to talk further about uh, how RCRC works, how important it is to have you uh, out there uh, representing us. So please stay tuned. And we'll be right back. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.